Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Matt's Mindset Monday. And today, we're going to talk about social media. We're going to talk about influence. We're going to talk about telling your story. We're going to talk about all the things that it takes to help influence others and or to become an influencer yourself. So uh, today, I have a special guest, old buddy of mine. We actually went to high school together way back in the day. We're not going to talk about graduation dates or anything like that. We don't want to date ourselves too much. Uh, but we did have, we were figuring out before the class, I think it was a Spanish class back in the day um, that we shared together and then kind of lost touch for a little while. Uh, and then through the, you know, through social media really is what I'm going to give it credit to. We were able to reconnect. Um, and now we have some projects going on and I want to introduce everyone to my man, Frank. Frank, I will let you kind of give your introduction of who you are and what you do. Well, good morning. No, I'm just kidding, man. Thank you so much, Matt, man. Uh, no, I am Frank Hadden. I am from Owensboro, Kentucky. Uh, moved up to Northern Kentucky. Here I am. Uh, I do, uh, I do a, a lot of things. My job is I work for LEI Home Enhancements, but uh, uh, I started a couple of nonprofits. I've uh, developed an app called Frankly Speaking that uh, Matt's uh, Mindset Monday is on, um, uh, in addition to a couple other shows. Uh, but there's just a few things that I do in the community, do a lot of outreach, and uh, I'm just here. I'm humbled, and I'm happy to be a part. So I didn't even know. So this is like we were just chatting before this, and there's a couple of things that we talked about that we didn't really know about each other. I just learned something new. Um, I didn't know that you were involved in nonprofits. So uh, I'm super involved in, in nonprofits, and uh, you know, there's a couple locally that I, that I'm very passionate about. What what before we dive into the influencer and stuff like that? What got you involved in the nonprofits and? Um, is that kind of just a passion of yours or? Well, yeah, I just, well, I just started, you know, I've been heavy in the church, uh, especially the last few years and um, just really want to make a difference, you know, and uh, there's a few, few different reasons, but uh, the main thing is I want to make a difference in the community and, and I really want to help, you know, a lot of times people will point fingers at administration or, or just different things that are going on around them. Uh, but nobody's really getting getting their hands dirty or few people are getting their hands dirty. We put it like that. And so I just really wanted to uh, see where I could help. And so with with my church, it's a small little church just getting going. And uh, so we started a men's meeting. And so what I was thinking, we were wondering how to what, what we wanted to call it. And I was really thinking, uh, where do men speak freely, you know, without inhibitions, without putting on a mask, anything like that. Uh, and two places came to mind. One was a, a barbershop, <laughs> you know, and the second is the garage. And yeah. so with the garage, uh, I thought there were a few things that we could develop that into as far as helping community. Um, so it started with a men's meeting. Now we do food distribution and we're working into uh, helping the youth of the, uh, of the community. I love that. that. That's awesome. That's awesome. The, uh, especially with the, you know, the, the garage part of it, because I was sitting there thinking, I was like, what's, what's he going to name as far as the two places that you speak for? First of all, the barbershop, I'm married to a beautician, so I don't get to go to the barber anymore. I get, I'm on my quarterly, once a quarter haircut. Jim, love you, even though you only cut my hair once a quarter. Uh, but, you know, so I got, I got to keep it short so that when it, after a couple months it grows out, it ends up all good. Uh, but yeah, no, those two places are awesome. And the things that you're doing um, are impacting the community. And the, the, the nonprofits that I'm part of, kind of the same thing, right? It just started as, you know, outreach programs and then watching them grow and blossom, um, you know, and, and turn into something that's big bigger than any of us could ever imagine is, is really cool. So I love that you're doing that. So let's jump in and talk about influence. So first of all, uh, the word influence, right? Like I, I asked Frank this question, like we kind of do this little prep thing before these uh, and send out a question. I was like, what's an influence? And he says, someone who influences. So you use that <laughs> you know, that's the answer, right? But uh, so, you know, what got you going with you know, the podcast and the app and, and all the things you're doing with, with Frankly Speaking, like, how did that start up? Um, and what was the first step in starting that? And then tell us a little story about how it's evolved from there. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, well, it really all started about uh, going back about six years ago, you know, as I was uh, telling you earlier, uh, Frank lived a crazy life, uh, you know, and, and and God really got a hold of me and, and, and changed some things. Uh, my mindset, <laughs> honestly, my mindset had to change. And 
And so when I was just kind of wondering, what, what am I going to do? I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Okay. I want to change my mindset. Now, what do I do? Um, and I saw this ad for uh, Ohio media school on TV. And when I called just to get some information, I was like, I'm going to go back when I get my stuff together. Right. Yeah. They talked me into actually going to the campus and checking it out. Now at this time, you know, I was a uh, pretty down and out. I didn't have two nickels to rub together, you know, and I had a real conversation with God. I was walking to the, to the bus uh, and I said, God, listen, if this is you and you open this door, uh, I promise you I'll walk through it. And so I went through the campus and they, uh, they had a radio station in the campus. It was a, a web radio, uh, cincyunderground.com. And so they took me on a tour and showed me some things. I did this little audition piece and blah, blah, blah. They told me how much it was going to be uh, to, to attend. I said, thanks for the tour. The next bus is coming. I'm on the way out. And, uh, <laughs> um, but um, I, I talked to the financial aid and it wound up being uh, substantially less. Uh, and I just had no idea that that, that was even going to be a thing. Um, and like I made the promise to God, I'm going to walk through this door. If you should open it, he opened it. And I've been walking ever since this radio station uh, we all had to sign up. We all had to do something in there. And I've always been told, you got a radio voice, you know. And <laughs> It's better than what I get told. I get told I got face for radio. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, get, I get told that as well. But <laughs> um, so I, I tried it out. And a lady by the name of Kay, uh, she comes in and she uh, she's like, I'm supposed to sign up for radio. I had trained to do this, uh, to go live on this particular day. And the person I was supposed to go live with didn't show up. So I'm just sitting there like, okay, we're just going to wing it. We're just going to go. Well, Kay walks in. She's like, I'm supposed to sign up to do something with the radio. I'm like, you want to be on the radio? She said, yeah. I said, sit down. We're going live in two minutes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and we just really started. And it was a connection. Our program director came, comes in afterward. And he's like, man, y'all got something. So being in school, we kind of made that a project and came up with a name. Her name's Kay. My name's Frank. So we came up with, okay, let's be Frank. And uh, we just wanted to be real raw and relevant about life and, and how God has transformed us, you know. And then uh, there was a, a radio station that had just uh, gotten new ownership uh, just right down the road from where I live. We went and talked to them and decided to get on the air and try this thing. And uh, four years later, here we are. Five years later, here we are. So uh, that's kind of how that evolved. And with that, so we're wanting to do some different things. Uh, the whole podcast thing starts getting big and everybody's potting something, you know, and TikTok and all these things. And I'm like, what if there was one place where I could get a lot of positive content together where everybody, you know, I don't have to go here and get this. I don't have to go here and get that. I can just hit this one button. I've never done an app before. And uh, Subsplash, uh, there was an app. <laughs> Lo and behold, there was an app come up on Facebook, you know, for, for Subsplash. So I checked it out. And uh, I would not, I got to give credit to my buddy, Drew Inski. Um, it would not be a thing without him. He, he, uh, he comes into my life, just he walks in the church one day and we kind of, we didn't really talk that day. We really, really months went by before we even talked, but um, he's turned out to be a really good friend and him and I got together talking about it. He has since started a podcast, One Accord. It's on the Frankly Speaking app. Download it. It is free, Android and iOS. Uh, One Accord's on there. Um, and uh, we got hooked up with you and, and, and yours is on there. I've got a, one that has to do with recovery. It's just, it's something that's positive for everybody at a touch. And that is something that I want. Again, affecting a community positively has been my mode of operation for the past couple of years. Yeah. And I, I absolutely love that because similar, similar story in terms of the development of Matt's Mindset Monday. Uh, without all the, the professional training and things like that, we, it's just a passion project for me, but it started for the same reason. Like I woke up one day and this is this is many moons ago, but um, you know, I woke up one day and I wasn't happy with who I was as a person, if I'm being completely transparent in terms of like, I wasn't the, the happy go lucky person that I was in my twenties. And, um, this is like, I, I always tell people I had like an early midlife crisis, right? Like it was like early, like around a, that 
around the 30 time frame. Um, and I had been working, I had great jobs and I had been, been successful, but at the same time I was super depressed and, um, I wasn't in any type of control by my mindset. And I'm one of those people that I'm huge around uh, my environment, meaning that like if I'm in a positive and productive environment, I'm going to be that much more positive and productive. And if I'm in a, a negative environment, I might not always be fully negative, but I'm not that it, it does something to me. It wears on me. And, and like um, energy wise, like I'm big into energy, giving and taking energy and, and protecting the energy and being around people who give me energy. Um, so that's when I started my mindset journey, really uh, kind of, you know, uh, you know, I had a conversation with God also and was like, hey, is this is this what you mean for me? And um, the answer that came back that I that he gave me or, and I helped self-discover was that if you want to change something, then you got to be in control of that and you can't. Oh play victim to you can't have that victim mentality that, that I'm destined to be here and there's nothing I can do about it. Cause the fact is you can hundred percent do whatever you want to do and you can change in any way that you want to change. All you have to do is take control of it, take ownership of it, and then study whatever it is you're going to study. And that's where I started reading a lot of books and started focusing on mindset and started, you know, daily affirmations and, and different things like that to make sure that I, that I was in the right frame of mind to be able to succeed. And then, then I, then the fast forward like some years and a lot of work and a lot a lot of therapy a lot a lot of everything and uh you know I, I was I got involved with Keller Williams who is all about productivity and positivity and once I once I got in this environment is when I really started to see things flourish and um I started you know teaching other people what I had learned about mindset and being able to control your destiny and next thing I know um you know the pandemic hits right a few years ago and I started this and I don't even remember what it was originally called, but I started a Facebook group just to help people who were struggling, you know, business owners or people who were mentally struggling with everything that was going on in this, this crazy, crazy world. And uh, one thing led to another. And then next thing I know, every Monday I'm interviewing people talking about mindset. And then, then, then this guy named Frank that I went to high school with reaches out and is like, hey, I got this app uh, that I want you, I want to fe feature your podcast on. And I was like, I didn't even know it was considered a podcast. Like, I'm just going live on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm just up here talking. I don't really know what I'm doing. But, uh, you know, that and then one thing led to another. We were able to connect, which is awesome. Always good to connect with somebody from the past. And then, um, you know, especially when we have so many things alike in terms of wanting to put that positivity out and, and being able to control our mindset and, and have some control over our life and make sure that we go the direction that we want to go and take as many people as we possibly can along with us. And I think that's, that's where, you know, the passion comes through. Right. And that's, that's what leads to, to, you know, us being here and sitting here together. So I love that. Absolutely. You yeah. know, the, the cool thing that, that, that you bring up is that, you know, we have the same kind of passion and, and, and drive and things like that. The, the thing I want to get across to people is you all have your passion too that I feel that everyone has it there there's nothing stopping you but you um there's if somebody like me <laughs> can make some of this stuff happen man anybody can anybody yeah. can and I just I want to be an encouragement that's like the none of this stuff is really from me I want to be an encouragement for for other folks to be like hey well look he did it and all he did was just put one foot in front of the other and this is how it happened maybe if I take a step then and my answer is absolutely yes take a step and then take another yeah good uh, you're spot on there and that's what I mean I remember my grandfather used to tell me all the time back in the day 90 percent of life showing up and I was like no there's this skill and you need this and you gotta do this and you gotta do this and you're looking back now in my 40s and he's right just show <laughs> up and don't don't chase perfection that's the Come other on. thing it's like just move like just keep That's like moving. one step in front of the other, one step in front of the other. So it's kind of interesting that, you know, we kind of took two different paths to get here. You know, you went through through school and then got involved in, in the radio route. I went more the, the social media route uh, in terms of and even now, like my big my biggest audience outside the podcast is, you know, streaming this live on Facebook, you know, getting on, getting views and different things like that. So um, how much do you use social media? We we use social media quite a bit. Um, I mean, it's just the the day and age that we're in. You know, uh, you, you have to. You, you can't you can't get away from it. And that was the 
the kind of dilemma with radio because even in school they were talking about you know radio's kind of uh, you know on the outs you know video killed the radio star you know kind of deal you know <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But there's, there's truth to that you know but radio is so consistent and, and it's something that you know if you want to get started you don't have to be on camera you don't have to you know it, it takes a lot of the fear out of trying something you know you're behind the microphone nobody's really you don't know if anybody's listening or not you know they are but you don't know that for yeah, sure. yeah. Um, so that that was just kind of the the thing and also having the radio station in the school um just kind of kind of pushed us in that direction yeah so i've i've done radio like as far as just you know spot on the radio spots, I guess you could say, but I've never done, obviously had my own radio show or anything. So you can't like, so at least when I'm watching, like I can see how many people are live with me on Facebook, or I can see how many people jump in the zoom or, you know, afterwards I can watch the views. How does that work with radio? I've always wondered that. Like, do you know how many people are listening to you or is it like Man, you, you put a bucket out in the, the street, on. you put a bucket out in the street and you toss a penny and, and maybe it'll go in, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> you don't really know, you know, there's an area of, which the, where the uh, where the frequency goes, um, but you know our shows on uh, from from twelve to one on Wednesdays. Okay, let's be frank. Check it out one hundred three point nine uh, FM WCBG. But if uh, <laughs> you, you you don't really know who's watching from that from twelve to one or who's listening from twelve to one. So uh, as far as that's concerned, you can't really track what's going on and especially like they don't do the, the rating systems are different now and everything is going social media. So it's, uh, uh, it's not really trackable, um, but it's cool when you're on the radio and you ask a question or something and somebody calls in, you know, and they, uh, they, they have feedback and, or somebody will call later on and, and, and ask something. For, so, you know, people are listening. There's just no real way to track it. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that. And, you know, some of the radio stations that I follow, you know, they actually, the reason I'm following is I can honestly say it's probably because of social media. Like I just saw some, a post, a host that posted something. I was like, oh, I like their personality. Let me check out their show. And then I would listen to their show and it'd be, you know, we're either in alignment or we're not, and that's okay. And then I either keep listening or I don't. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, what, what all do you, I mean, I know what you use every social media platform. Can we talk about TikTok for a second? Because yeah, <laughs> so many people tell me like, you got to be on TikTok. You got to be on TikTok. Brother, and, where, where did it come from is what I want to know. Like this thing comes out of nowhere. And I want to say it was like started like with vines or something yeah. and the vines were cool, uh, made me laugh and all that. And then I think it started as something and then transitioned into something else. And there wasn't really, uh, I, I didn't think it was going to be a thing. I really didn't think it was going to be a thing. And then 20, 2020, of course, we had nothing else to do, right? Because yeah, I think, I and so you know, I download this TikTok and and I'm watching, and it's kind of funny. And first thing you know, four hours goes by. And you're just like, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, yes, a day. That same thing happened to me. So I was a late adopter on TikTok. As far as even just like I just now started posting on TikTok within the last you know, really month. Um, but as far as like even watching it, I didn't download it till 2021 at some point, maybe mid year, I would say I've been on. So right at a year now, but I did the same thing. Like literally the first night I downloaded, like I'm sitting there and I'm just swiping videos, watching videos. Watching. <laughs> Next thing I know, it's like midnight. And I'm like, man, I gotta go sleep. I gotta be up, I gotta get up at 5 a.m. So midnight's an issue for me, but it was, it's like just, it's a, the ultimate, like, wormhole time suck and absolutely and enjoyed every single second about it and and i've never been a huge video guy like i mean like you know we were talking about our kids earlier before the show you know like ryan and, the, and austin and they they facetime all the time so just that's how they're used to communicating versus you know i'm still like phone call text message you know not used to the video inter interaction at a high level but this TikTok is all video. And then all of a sudden it took off. So, uh, you know, I think it's the perfect storm of that, that change in 
I would say like from one generation to the next of being used to video because of this and technology and FaceTime and things like that with the perfect storm of the pandemic when you had a lot of people who couldn't work, couldn't couldn't do a lot of things they normally did. So they had hours upon hours uh, to be able to spend, to spend on, on the app. And then all of a sudden it, it takes off. And now, you know, uh, you know, I even got, you know, Kelly, our, our operating principal, she's like, you got to get on TikTok. Like, that's like, I probably wouldn't have ever started posting on TikTok if it weren't for her pushing me. Be like, you got so much great content. Like, just go out there and just start making it and sharing it and, and use it. Cause I'm tripping. I'm, I'll be honest, I'm a Facebook guy. Like, that's like, I'm old school. Like, my kids call me an old head because yes. I don't really <laughs> interact on, on, on Instagram and all these things. But that's just where my business and my audience started was on Facebook. So, like, switching between platforms is as important as it is. Like, I've, I'll be honest, I've struggled to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that's the same. Uh, I'm, you know, paper and pencil type guy, you know, and uh, it's just, it, it's, really weird when I was going through school they were like you gotta post you gotta post you gotta post and I was like wow you don't have to do all that you know <laughs> blah, blah. and then like the TikTok thing comes out and I think that where it really blew up was that around 2019 people started figuring out this algorithm if you post a couple of times a day every day then you start getting out there and people will share and blah 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 and you kind of blow up well, then they found out that you start getting checks once you get so many views and all this bunch of stuff. And in the 2020, I remember it was about halfway through 2020, they, were, they went through uh, the people who had made the most money the year before. And I'm talking $2.9 million, $3 million. And I'm like, for posting stuff? You know what I mean? Like, what? Yeah. And I still, um, still not big on it yet, but it's one of those things that, you know, uh, eventually, you know, me and my gray hair, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up and we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out, man. So, you know, hindsight's always 2020, right? I was, um, I was on a vacation and this had to have been, I mean, Frank, we're probably talking 2015, maybe. And I'm on this vacation. Um, it was at St. Thomas and I'm down there and this lady staying in this hotel. Young, I say lady, you know, younger girl. She was, She's probably, you know, mid twenties. And we got, we were, we were just chit-chatting a big group of people around we're just chit-chatting. Everybody's talking about what they do. And we're like, yeah, you know, we sell real estate, blah, blah, blah. And uh, she's like, oh, well, I, I just walk, I travel and just document my travels and get paid to do it. And I was like, what? And then, so she told me she's, she was, she basically got paid to come to this resort that we were staying at to YouTube, everything about the resort posted online because she gets so many views like that generates revenue. And she was getting paid by the, the the company, the resort, to be there. Like they paid for a flight, they paid for a room, everything. And all she had to do was create videos and show her dinner, show what she did during the day and all that stuff. And I remember sitting there and I swear to you, I sat there and I was like, no way. That is not what she does for a living. This, right. this is the biggest crop, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. I got right. home and I started looking it up and I'm like, and I had the same thing, started looking at numbers. This is back like when YouTube was, people were getting, starting to get paid on YouTube for the first time. Um, and just looking at some of the numbers, like people have a million views and, and the amount that you earn per view and then the ad revenue that you can run off of. And I was like, mind blown. And then of course, didn't do anything with it until right. like, <laughs> seven years later. <laughs> I was like, all right, I guess I can start doing this. But for me, it's never been about the money. Like I've never earned a penny off of anything that I've ever done. I, I, and I don't care if I do. Like, it's not, it's not about that. It's just about sharing information and, and hopefully somebody will listen to us and, and maybe, you know, maybe we'll, we'll create the next TikTok star or just off this, you know, little chat that we're doing today. Who knows where it will go. But, that, but that's really cool that you have that option in today's day and age. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's something that, that wasn't uh, before that now is. You know, I, I think about... We were talking about Nokia phones the other day, you know, and we were talking about our first our first phones. And uh, I remember where I lost mine, and we were the the songs and the the game, the snake, and all that. And then even going prior prior to that, you know, you got to wait till a certain time so you can use it for free. And then you talk about the pagers, and you go back. You know what I mean? It's stuff that my yeah. kids have no idea about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no idea. You know, I mean, you want to talk old school, like pager codes? I still remember half the pager codes. <laughs> <laughs> but Don't pay 911 unless it's really an emergency, right? Yeah, yeah, let's get an emergency. Then, then give me 10 minutes, I go find a pay phone. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Oh, I don't have a quarter. I don't have a quarter. <laughs> I didn't call you, sorry. 
let's look at so for people who are looking to get in and and want to be an influencer if you will and I, I think the influencer word is, is is tossed around a little too much honestly but uh, somebody who just wants to up their 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 presence uh, or they have a story to tell or they have a message they want to get out uh what do you what do you recommend for them I think you just go on and tell your story. I think that the people, uh, what people are scared of is being unique and, and not being like someone else. When in fact, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. There is yeah. never going to be another Matt Brown. There's never going to be another Frank Cad. There's never going to be another K. There's never going to be another Drew. There's never going to be another one of these people, right? And whoever is wondering or thinking about doing this, there's never going to be another you. So one, video yourself just to document yourself. You know, mm -hmm. I remember my daddy, uh, my, my daddy back in the day, he had them little tape recorders, you know, with the little mini cassette tapes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, as he got older, he would uh, I'd catch him recording himself, you know, where he would uh, tell some of his memoirs or something like that, you know. And mama's got those. And uh I think now this is kind of the video, the Facebook, the TikToks, those types of things. It's a way to, to record yourself just to keep record of yourself, you mm -hmm. know? Um, not only that, but people are going to watch, and, and everybody has a story. And I promise you, whether you think so or not, somebody's interested in your story. So my, my advice is to just do it. Be like Nike. Just do it. Once you... I. Once you do it, it's like the first time you kind of sit there and you kind of freeze up. And you're like, well, what do I say? Well, what do I do? Mm -hmm. um, it's fine because you can always make Drew and I like we, we did the opening to the uh, to the frankly speaking app. I messed that thing up. I couldn't tell you how many times I think we sat down there for an hour and a half. <laughs> I was like, screw it, man. We'll just whatever. Um, those are the fun moments to look yeah. back on. You know what I mean? It, it, uh, you can say, oh, man, look at where I started a year ago to where I'm at now. Well, if you don't start, you're not going to see that journey. So my advice is pick something, go with it, be yourself. That's all it takes. Yeah, a couple of things that I was just thinking as you were talking. Number one, how cool is it when an old like Facebook memory pops up? from like two, three, four years ago. And you get to experience that again, because, you know, the, the way that our brains work, experiencing something in real life and experiencing the memory of that has the same impact. So if it did something for you in real life, when you experience that memory, even just thinking about it or reading about it, that's why I think journaling got so big back before social media is you got to, re when you reread re -read those things, you got to recall it. And then that did had that same emotional response to you. Uh, and then the second thing, you know, that you were talking about is, uh, you know, just everybody is unique. And I think we were conditioned to not be unique. Like I have an interesting take on this. I read a book called Curiosity Co. And it is all about like, if you think about children and, and you know, if, you know, you have, you have kids, so you understand this, like how many questions that you get at a young age. But if you monitor it over the course of their lifetime, less and less questions get asked. So if you think about that, we're taught to sit in a school and I'm not knocking school systems. I, I, I think, you know, we have, the education system is actually pretty good as is having for improvement. Yeah, always, but we get taught to sit in a classroom, be quiet, only raise your hand when you have a question, you know, and, and we get spoken to and we're taught to sit there and be quiet. And, and that conditions us to lose that curiosity over time. And, and in losing the curiosity, we lose our uniqueness. And all of a sudden, it's okay to blend in. And you're supposed to, you know, the, the suggested route is that you go to high school and then you go to, to college. And I actually could make the argument that trade school is more beneficial, but that's a different story for a different podcast. But, you know, you get taught to do these things and you got to go do this. And, and it's like we, we become a herd, right? And we lose our identity. Whereas I think something that what we're talking about in terms of being a, a influencer, if you will, is really all about who are you and how are you different? Because with the billions of people that we have on this world, like you said, there's somebody that's interested. There's somebody out there that, that has your same, your same mindset, your same talents, your same abilities, your same interests, and wants to hear what you have to say. And I think it starts with just telling that story. And, and that's super uncomfortable in the beginning. But if you can, if you can just push past like that 90% showing up, if you can just hit play, hit record, I guess, in this instance, 
and then it just put it out there and see where it goes and you know that that's the key to this i think absolutely absolutely and the thing is is when you have your mindset toward helping someone and, and this is the thing that kind of got me over uh the anxiety and fear that i had was like okay this isn't about me this is about my story is going to help somebody what i have to say uh, what, uh, whatever people I can bring on this show, uh, we're going to help somebody. So at that point, it doesn't really matter if I fumble through it or whatever, because somebody is dealing with the same thing that you're dealing with. Though, though we're unique, we all have a story, right? And our uniqueness is what dictates how we handle said thing. Mm -hmm. How you got through it is going to help someone else as they're going through it or if, if they have just went through it maybe they definitely didn't think the same way you did so you're helping you're you're helping them either cope or or navigate through something that that you both are going through so uh I, it's 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 i would almost call it vital um and, and that's the thing with like church you know we are we're supposed to go to these buildings to to do that to help one another iron sharpens iron you know and we're supposed to help each other navigate this world through um through spirituality and christianity and and, and what have you but um a, a lot of times people are either fearful or, or don't want to step out and, and and tell their story and, and so uh you're limiting yourself i'll just i'll just put it like that you're very very much limiting yourself and uh hindering someone else's growth as well yeah and that's the thing for me it's like so i'm still super uncomfortable like i never go back and i shouldn't say never very rarely do i go back and listen to my podcast very rarely do i go back and watch the videos if i do it's usually because my guest said something that i want to revisit and write down because it was so impactful to me that that I wanted to dive deeper into that or have a side conversation with them. Um, and, you know, it's funny because I, I was in, a, we do this training called Bold um, as part of Keller Williams and um, business objectives, life by design, touches base on personal and, and professional productivity and, and development. And uh, one of the things I was talking to my Bold teacher one time, I was talking about this. And I was like, hey, I think I'm going to start this. I'm going to start doing this video log, things like that. I was like, but I don't, should I just do a podcast so that like I don't have to be on camera? And he's like, why do you, you think you look different in real life than you do on camera? And I was like, oh, well, you know what? I never thought about it that way before. <laughs> That'd be no different than me and you doing this in person, right? Like you're going to see me as, as I sit down. I'm going to see you as you sit down. And the camp, but for some reason, we, we, we have anxiety um, around the camera, fear around the camera, uh, when I actually think it's better because you get to see the, the emotion and the reaction um, of people. And, you know, we were talking earlier about, uh, you know, with like the younger generation using FaceTime and stuff. And I was talking to Ryan about this one time and I just asked him, I was like, why wouldn't you like, why FaceTime me when you could just text or call or, or, you know, you know do something a lot faster, basically. And he's like, I want to see your emotional response to things. I'm used to seeing how you react. And if I have a question that I need to ask, I want to see, do you react positively? Do you, are you neutral or do you have a negative reaction? Because that might determine what I'm going to say next. And I think our, our podcast and video logs, when you get on video, can be the same way. Like our audience gets to see what we're passionate about and you can dial in and you get to connect that much more because now you're not only relating to words, you're, you're relating to emotions. Absolutely. Absolutely. I say, you know, like it, it, it's so funny you say that because it's different having somebody in studio when I have a guest um, as opposed to a call in guest. You know, because I, I can't read them as as well. I can't see the facial and, and the body movement and all that. So so, yeah. And, and uh, another thing, too, that it's just real, you know, and, and I think people are just scared to make a mistake. All right. And then this is like a, a, a people people assume that there's a judgmental society. When in all actuality, there's really not. We're all we're all struggling. You know what I mean? Like everybody's everybody's mad about gas prices. Everybody is mad because all the pri every price has gone up. You know what I mean? Like we're all going through the same thing. But uh, the initial fear is like, well, I don't want to mess up in front of somebody. Well, man, we all mess up. We all make mistakes. And, yeah. and what I tell people who want to get into it and who want to do this? Really, I tell anybody uh, at my job or anywhere, uh, listen, 
you're going to mess up. So let's just get that out of the way. It's going to be okay. And we're going to keep rolling, you know, and kind of loose saw break that wall down. Uh, and, and that's what helps put, put those feet in front of each other. Yeah, that made me think about something there. I was, when I was doing public speaking back in college, you know, public speaking is the number one fear. Um, throughout at least the United States, it might be the world, I can't remember. But I know throughout the United States, public speaking was number one. And what we were talking about in there is, you know, a lot of times you walk up on this stage and all you can think about is everybody in this room is judging me based on X, Y, Z, right? Or even let's like, let's remove public speaking. Even if you walk into a crowd, you walk into a party or a, a, an arena, a venue, whatever, and you walk through this, this area that is full of people, the whole time you're thinking, Oh, I wonder if they if is is my shirt tucked in properly? Is this is is you know is is my tie straight? Is you know whatever is is my hat okay? You know that is my beard shaped up correctly? You know the whole time everybody else is also thinking those things about themselves. So yeah. you think that you know eighty percent of these people are in here judging me when in actuality you're spending eighty percent of your time judging yourself, and everybody else is too. So they're actually only focused on you. 20% or less of the time. And, and I think when somebody told me that, and I, I guess it was my public teaching speaker uh, back at Western, then I think that's when I had that mind shift of from that point forward, I was never afraid to get in front of people because I realized they're probably worried about themselves way more than they're worried about me. Right. And hopefully these words I, I pass on will benefit them in some way. Way more, way more. When you're, when you're comfortable, they're comfortable, you know? Right. And and that's, that's one thing, like anytime I speak in front of anybody, it's just like, we're going to go ahead and get this out of the way. You know, everybody who saw, it's all right. You know, I, I don't, back in the day when slapstick comedy was a big thing, you know, people like Steve Martin or, or Martin Short or whatever, they would come up on the stage and they would like trip and fall, you know, and get everybody laughing or whatever. It lowers the walls. It lowers the inhibition. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, it's one of those things that everybody calm down. It's going to be okay. And I, I, I just say that because I, I want people to understand that they have this. They Everybody can get on here and, and do this. Don't think too much about it. Just walk it out. Yeah, just, just go ahead and go do it. I, I love that. I love that. So let's talk a little bit more about your uh, Frankly Speaking app because I love this thing. I think what you've done here and, and putting people together is just is absolutely amazing and I, and I want you to plug it multiple times because <laughs> I just think it's that good and, and you, for anybody else who's listening I know for my friends in the Keller Williams world uh, a lot of you have podcasts and platforms that you speak on definitely get a hold of this guy because I think he's got something unique here so tell us a little bit of more about you know I mean obviously we know the name's frankly speaking but but what is it what does it do and, and how does it benefit people so it, it, it's an app um and it's a uh, downloadable, it's free. It's a free download uh, on Android and iOS. So the thought was to get multiple podcasts, different things, because at first it was like, okay, I can put my show on here. But then I'm like, if I really want to reach people, if that's really the idea, not everybody wants to hear Frank talk. And that's just the reality, man, you know? <laughs> and some people hear Frank talk and they're, they're tired of hearing Frank talk. You yes. know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, it's the reality. Yeah. And so, like, if, if I really want to reach mass amounts of people, you have to have different perspectives. You have to have different views, different takes on life. And to be real, raw, and relevant, it takes a village. And, and that's true across the board. It doesn't matter. You want to start a brokerage. Well, you got to get this person. You got to get that person. You got to get these people. You know what I mean? Even when you started selling homes, you got to get clients. You got to get people to teach you. You got to, you need different perspectives of any world that you're in so when I was thinking about this podcast I was like well I know a couple of people that are at the radio station with me who do this thing uh, brother Boston he's uh he's an evangelist he goes around he plays music we play music together and some different outreaches and things like that he's on on Saturday afternoons he records a half hour show and was like hey man what do you think about doing this he said heck yeah I'm all in and then uh so I was like heck yeah we got two shows and I hit up I hit up quite a few people and you know the number one thing I run into Matt is people don't believe things are free <laughs> it's like, they're like no what's the catch or whatever and I was like yeah. no just give me your content we'll put it on here you know not a big deal um but he joined and then uh Drew Drew that was helping me um he just kind of saw the progress and he's had some things on his heart you know he's um 
he's been a, a, a pastor. He's done his thing, you know, um, so he had some things to say and some thoughts. So he started his own thing, one accord, you know, and his deal, it's, it's cool because once he gets some different guests, he's got a, he's had a couple. But once he gets some different guests, you know, he really wants to hear the other side, like unbelievers you know, and, and wants to kind of not debate. You know, the, we're not interested in debating. It's just hear the other side. You know what I mean? And, and so um, we're inclusive. You know what I mean? With that that pod, per, that particular podcast is inclusive, and then of course it's the Okay Let's Be Frank show. Well, then uh, uh, hit up Mr. Matt Brown and, and the the Mindset Monday, and I, I'm like, I loved when I first saw Club Growth come on, and it was just positive. It was just, hey man, start your week off great. You know, um, that's all that I heard, and that's all that I saw, and I'm like, dude, positivity, positivity. And then uh, while I was at school, I met a gentleman named Aaron Lane. And uh, you know, when, when I first met him, he said, my name's Insane Aaron Lane, you know, and he, he's a character. He's a hoot, man. He's a, but he's a really cool guy. And we kind of went the same path uh, as far as like being in addiction and things like that. Mm-hmm. And he uh, he's he's in recovery and he always had this idea to do a, a podcast called Tragedy of Triumph where he wanted to go back and tell people's stories, be it people's victory stories. Mm -hmm. And with, I don't know how aware people are of recovery and all these things, but it's a huge thing. Um, There are more people in recovery than I even imagined. Um, So again, I wanted to have these stories where somebody comes on and maybe they get some hope from seeing uh, one of the, or listening to one of these podcasts. So um these these all come about and i've talked to a few more people um if there is uh i would like to get a female podcast on there if if there is a female listening and you do something like this please let me know it'd be great um but the whole thing was just to create a platform for people to be able to find positivity and hear something other than my voice (laughs) and we've also included blogs if anybody wants to write a blog um and just make it positive it doesn't matter you know just tell about your day whatever it is uh we'd be happy to put it on we've got a community calendar on there where there are a bunch of men's meetings um that's kind of how it started just because i told you the garage thing with the men's fellowship and all that so i wanted guys to be able to just at the touch of a button find somewhere to go to to fellowship um so we've got a bunch of men's meetings on there i have included a few other things that are around in our community Um, But just at a touch of a button, you can listen to some positivity, you can go physically find some positivity, or you can write or read some positivity. Um, That's just what it was all about. It was a mindset. Uh, God hooked me up with Drew. Drew was the technical guru that made it happen. And so here we are. I love that. And, I, and you know, the one thing I know in, in listening to, to all those podcasts and, and while I don't know those people personally um, outside of you, I can tell that they're all passionate about what they're what they're speaking on or, or what their what their subject is. And I think that's what's really key in terms of, you know, if you if you want to influence people in, in something, then find your passion that you're speaking on and speak passionately about it. And then, like you said, be very real and be raw and don't chase perfection. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just go out and do it. And it's consistency over time. Right. You know, I think we're in a world of instant gratification where, you know, even even myself, I'm like, all right, I put my first podcast out here. I'm going to have a thousand listeners. And it's been the first week I had like six (laughs) but you know it's like but when you do it consistently over time it'll build and it's not about the numbers right don't chase numbers don't chase checks don't don't do any of that just speak to your passion and know that you're going to help somebody and then if it's so be it you hit numbers and you get to earn a dollar off this or a million dollars off this whatever you're doing then that's the added byproduct of what it should be about which is telling your story and helping people and being a being passionate about something and then being your unique self to back to what we were talking about earlier get out of that cookie cutter mode go tell your story be who you were meant to be in this world Amen. Amen. It, it's so crazy because we think about if, if we seriously just sit down and think about the top five people that we find influential in our society. Mm-hmm. Think about how unique they are. Think yeah. about all of them. I'll use a big one. Michael Jackson. Crazy yeah. guy, right? Super crazy. Doesn't fit in any mold, right? Prince was another one, you know, doesn't oh, fit in. Uh, there, there's so many. There's yeah. so many to think about. There's a guy up here. Uh, there's, a, there's a store up here called Jungle Gems. 
and uh, it started in a tent with produce and it just kind of grew. And it's one of the biggest grocery stores I've ever been in my life. It has everything worldwide. You meet this guy, you want to talk about an eclectic individual. <laughs> this guy is just, he, you would think he's out there because he's not of the norm, but he's so intellectually together and he goes after what he wants. And he's made this huge empire, right? Walt Disney, same thing. These yeah. people didn't don't fit in any mold. So uh, I don't and think they also don't book. stop. No, that's the other thing about it. every single person that you name. I've read most of their autobiographies, uh, and every single one of them got told not to do something or to change or to not be themselves. And it was they were all passionate about no, this is me. This is who I am. I'm going to keep doing this and it's either going to work or it's not, but I'm not going to change who I am. And I think that's crucial also. Amen. Amen. I, I love, uh, you, you can't really tell. I got a little bit of a belly. I love food. So, <laughs> you know, I, I watch these food documentaries, you know, and, and Charlie Hershey and uh, uh, Mr. Hines and, and uh, uh, was it Colonel Sanders, you know, all these people, just what you said, you know, they were told no, they were shut down time and time again. And uh, my favorite line, I love National Treasure. You ever seen the movie? Oh, yeah, yeah. Love it, love it. My favorite line in the movie is where they're talking about Thomas Edison. You know, he said Thomas Edison didn't find a thousand ways or he didn't fail a thousand times. He just found a thousand ways how not to make a light bulb. He only, oh, it only, he only needed that one to make it work. You just got to keep going, keep going, keep trying. Don't fit in the mold, be you. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, it's about time for us to wrap up. I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Uh, you know, I think I think we we talked about a lot of different things. What would you want our audience to take away today uh, of all the different things that we talked about? What are what are some uh, parting words you would like to leave them with? Sure. Oh, man. Um, the first and foremost is live on purpose. Um, live on purpose. I tell there there are three things that I tell my kids every day. Um, I love them. There's always one more thing that you can do and live on purpose. Um, you have to, you, you have to, there's, I spent so many times, um, in, uh, of not so nice places, uh, where you wake up and you just, you're stuck, you know? And when you feel like there is no purpose, that's the world lying to you. You have a purpose, Absolutely. live on purpose, have some type of direction, something, it doesn't matter. And I, and I think about two things. When you go to the bathroom, you got a purpose for going, right? Yeah. When you go to the kitchen, you got a purpose for going. So let's walk out our door with that same type of mindset. Let's live on purpose. And the second thing, don't be afraid to mess up. You're going to mess up. Just get that out of the way. It's going to be all right. Case okay, progress, not perfection. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sun's still going to shine. You're going to be fine. Yeah, I love that. So let's uh, let's do this. Let's wrap it up. But before you do, plug the radio station, plug the app, plug anything else you want to plug. Let people know how to get a hold of you because you have some great content. I think the world needs to hear more. <laughs> oh, dude, man, you're too kind. Uh, but no, I am Frank Haddon. You can look me up on Facebook. I have my own page. You can look up the OK Let's Be Frank page. Uh, comment on there. You can look up the Frankly Speaking page uh, or the garage page. Uh, we do accept donations as the 501c that helps us keep getting food and, and get vans and things like that so we can we can get out. Uh, the Frankly Speaking app, please download that. It is free on iOS and Android. Frankly Speaking community app. And I do want to give a shout out to my dude. This is why I'm wearing this shirt. Uh, it's my guy, Brian Myers. He's my, he was my boss at uh, LEI. Uh, his aunt has stage four cancer. So we're, we made some shirts, Sandy Strong, uh, one of the nicest guys you'll meet. She's a sweetheart. Um, so they're, uh, I don't know, just want to give them a shout out. If you have time, say a prayer for them and their family. Um, Absolutely. I'm, just, I'm just here to love on folks and help, man. I love that. Well, we'll definitely uh, say a prayer for Sandy and uh, we'll, we'll say a prayer for your continued blessings. And I, and I love what, what you're doing and just keep going out and doing it, man, because, because your passion shines through. And I think you got a message that the world needs to hear. So God bless you. And uh, thank you for spending some time with us today. Got it, man. See you All right. Let's see you next week. <laughs> Bye, man.